Tim, you want to tell us about the Splash organization here in Sheboygan and, and how they promoted this event? The Splash organization in Sheboygan was created by a, a group of people that wanted to see a little more tourism dollars spent in Sheboygan and Sheboygan County and bring the sport of powerboat racing back to Sheboygan where it really kind of originated back in the middle 50s. Uh, we worked very hard on last year's event and we worked even harder on this year's event to try to bring and keep powerboat racing coming here because as we know this, this is a non-profit organization and all the money goes right back into the race for next year. Right now we have some uh, heat races going on in the background. Uh, tell us about the, the event here going on today. Uh, what part of the event? Well, the, the overall, uh, what they have to do to qualify. There's three three classes racing today, 120s, the SST 120s, and they average around 100, 110 miles an hour on the course. They're the bigger boats. And there's the SST 6070s. They are a little smaller. They'll average somewhere around the 90 mile an hour mark. And the SST 45s will average around 80 to 85 miles an hour. Uh, the Grand Prix, Wisconsin Grand Prix Championships are here today for all three classes. And the North American Title Championship race is here today for the SST 45s. As far as the getting back to the Splash organization, uh, I mean, the people are volunteering, and, and who are the, what other people are helping? What people are helping? I mean, other organizations. <laughs> and the noise of the boats is nice, isn't it? Uh, the people helping here, the Buccaneers are helping uh, do the food stand, the concession stand. Uh, Millersville Rec Association is helping with the, with the beer. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people that just, they're behind the scenes. We have a lot, a nice select group of people. Scott Thompson has been uh, very instrumental in getting uh, a sponsorship for the SST 120 race. Uh, we've had Johnsonville Sausage uh, sponsor, Miller Sales and Service. Uh, we have, of course, Chrysler Corporation came through big time for us. Uh, they sponsor, they're sponsoring the SST 45s, the big North American championship. They came through a $4,000 purse for us for that. Uh, and we have Sheboygan Development Association, Sheboygan Splash, and Johnsonville, and we are sponsoring the SST 6070 race. Well, if this year, depending on how it, how it goes, what are you planning for next year? I think you, you said it right. It's depending upon how it goes, depending upon how much money we can collect, how much money we raise here today. We've got a VIP viewing area, and it looks a little slight right now, but again, racing really starts at 1 o'clock this afternoon. We've got beautiful event racing shirts here we're selling uh, for just $15, which are absolutely magnificent. And we have our race programs that are going for $2. So we have to compile all of this and see what our bills look like and see how much we can put together for next year. I think my, my ultimate goal would be to get a, one sponsor. You go to someone like uh, Coca-Cola or Miller Beer or, or somebody or Piggly Wiggly, and you say, look, let's make this the Sheboygan Splash Coca-Cola uh, Powerball races and they could come up with all the prize money and we would put together a promotion package for them, put them in the book, and that would be the ultimate goal for somebody to pick up the tab for the twelve to fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars for prize money. That's the goal. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? Or? Uh, there's too many people to thank right now. I thank the City of Sheboygan, the Public Works Committee, for, for at least giving us the opportunity to uh, rope off half of Rot Rotary Park. Uh, they're instrumental in a lot of the things we wanted to do, and I guess that's, that's really kind of nice for the City of Sheboygan giving something a little back to us, uh, you know, I mean, to, to the community. So they had, they they were on our side 100%. We're talking to Eric Barnes. Eric, uh, how long have you been racing and what classes are you racing? Uh, this is my third season, Tom, and this is a SST 45. Okay. What, uh, now who uh, built your boat here? Is it something that you built or... Was uh, it built for you? My boat was built uh, by a, a company out of West Dallas called B&H Race Boats. Uh, the gentleman's name is Sam Hemp. Oh, okay. And uh, he's been racing for a number of years and uh, is pretty much a master at the craft. Okay. And sponsors, uh, what does it cost to run one of these boats? Uh, you can put a boat on something like this on the water for something turnkey on, uh, you know, an entry-level type uh, position for somewhere between uh, seven to $10,000. You can be running uh, top-notch equipment with spare parts probably in the neighborhood of uh, twelve to thirteen thousand dollars okay that's quite a chunk of change yeah it is there. again you said how long you've been racing this is my third season third racing season. okay uh have you ever run here before yeah i ran here last year uh we were running really well we got out front early and uh unfortunately we had a little bit of mishap on the back i spun a propeller on the prop shaft and okay. it shut us down so right. i wound up watching the race from the far corner uh and actually was watching the race evolve around me in the corner sometimes <laughs> okay.
Hi, we're talking to Tom Wellicky, and you're out of uh, Glen Ellen, Illinois, right Glen out of, outside of Chicago. Okay. He's getting ready to get in his boat and I guess do a little testing and qualifying. Well, can you explain a little bit what you're wearing here? Yeah, um, the life jacket has helped the uh, flotation, obviously, when, if we get into an accident. The helmet to protect the head. Um, this is a big key for me, safety-wise, is the intercom talking to someone on the shore. If there's another accident that's involved, that they can radio me and let me know where I can concentrate more on racing. Um, the capsules are the big thing, too. They're our lifeline. They keep us alive. I mean, they're bulletproof. You know, um, the, we have six-point harness in there also, which keep us secure, carry oxygen in case for some reason we're upside down and can't get our belt off. Uh, we've got 10 minutes of oxygen with us to let the divers get in there and do what they have to do. Here's your lineup in boat 638 coming out of Am Amoro, Wisconsin. Kevin Komarowski, he'll be lining up as boat number five on the starting ramp. In 488, Jim Komarowski from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. He's got that coveted number one position on the start ramp. In boat number three, the 1994 national champion in this class is Mike Weenett from Bondewell, Wisconsin. Boat number seven from Glen Ellen, Illinois, the super fast Tom Welch. He'll be in hole number three. Mike Weena will be in booth number two. In 460, two-year driver from Mound, Minnesota in lane number six. Boat number 460, Guy Minnick. And the driver you're going to watch today in boat 874. From Azanti, Minnesota, Chris Swenson. This one, the heart pounds when you're in one of these race boats because this is for all of it. It all depends what they do between these two heats of racing. Now here's a little added touch to it, folks. They drew their positions by lottery for where they will end up starting in the first heat, the first 10 laps. These are some of the fastest 70 SST 70s in the United States. They're all here waiting to challenge for this coveted Wisconsin Grand Prix title today. There's the flag is up. Drivers are poised. They got their hand on the button. Anytime he can drop this flag and they will go. There they come off the dock. Oh, Mike Weenan got a little bobble caught in the back. He's got to drive awful hard to pick up positions. Well, it's 874 shooting out into the front. Mike Weenan in the trailing position now. He's going to have to pick off some boats to get up there and get positions. But Callie's, or, uh, well, Nicky's going to have his hands full with this 874 boat. Watch how fast uh, Mike Weena comes up and around those other boats through the turn. Now he's going to run the outside lane and keep it powered all the way out around the course and hold some RPM up around this turn. But out in front is 874 Chris Swenson giving all he can do to hold off the driver Tom Wilnecki. Weena's going to pick off 638 right here down the back straightaway. And well, Nikki goes to the inside, but out in front, the advantage is going to be to Mike Weenet right now, as long as 874 stays out in front, because he's going to have some water to run up and underneath. Will Nikki? Will Nikki comes down to the inside? Weenet's going to take the clean water down the middle. Oh, did you see that big move over there? He almost got touching boats. So that gives Weenet the fresh water on the outside to run. But these two guys are handle to handle, deck to deck down the front straightaway, and here they are. Lap number two complete, they're side by side. <clears throat> Weenet's gonna pick them off, hopefully down this straightaway. He's gotta get some fresh water. Look at him porpoise the boat down there Well, Nicky airing it out. He's gotta, Weenet's gotta get underneath 874 and start charging with all he has. 
to win this championship today. Will Nicky around? Wiener starting the corner. Will get Nicky takes it tight. Wiener comes on the inside of him. Oh, Will Nicky is flying that boat down the straightaway. He is on that ragged edge as he comes down right in front of the start finish line now. And win it on the outside is closing. Win it, pounds it into the turn, takes it underneath, pulls up three boat lengths. Gonna have to go to the outside on him or stay underneath to keep that clean water. And they're off. The race is out front and a race for fourth in Suey right now between the two Komarowskis. A race for first and second and a race for fourth on this course. Wienit comes diving down underneath. Will Nicky's got it aired out before him. Here comes Wienit and Will Nicky down the straightaway. Will Nicky's porpoising, flying up and down. The nose is raising. He's on the edge, real close to disaster. And Wienit is right underneath him. Will Nicky gives him a touch of the room. Here comes, oh, what a move. Will Nicky goes out, Wienit. Kicks it, comes out. What a hold in for Wienit. Almost had him there. 874 in third. And a battle between the two Komarowskis, Jim and Kevin, gone on for fourth. And both 460. Guy Minnick is challenging for that. Wienit comes underneath. Well, Nicky is aired out. And these guys are almost side by side at this point with a little bit of a stretch right now for Will Nicky. It's a nervous seat to be on the inside right now. But here comes Wienit on the charge. Wienit drives down. Whoa, close miss. And he's on top of him down that straightaway. Red flag to 878. Red flag on the chorus. Had a boat over in turn number two. And they're upside down in the water. It's an awful nervous feeling. So our driver that went over, that's boat, well, you don't have a number on it now, but it's boat 460 and the driver is Guy Minnick from Mount Minnesota. He's gonna have an awful, awful long time and a lot of hard work to clean that motor up. And if you don't think that's true, you can ask one of those 45 drivers, Eric Barnes, how difficult it is to get your engine freshened up after you dump one. Well, they're going to get them turned around right away. And as soon as they're turned around and in position and the crash boats are in their, in their positions on the race course, the turn judges, the safety patrol, the divers and everything, we're going to go boat racing again with these monstrous SST-70s going at it again. Guys, you got to keep them upright. Waiting for the horn to sound and the race to begin, and there it is. We're almost ready to go. Patrol boats are in position. And the flag is down right away, a sudden start. And they're on their seventh lap right now. Out in front, 874. Here comes Wiener charging in the third. Well, Nicky in second spot, 874 jumped off that beach like he had a rocket booster on it. And into turn one, let's see if they leave the buoys this time. 874 shoots out in front. Second place is Will Nicky. Third place is Wienit. And that red boat coming on the inside, it looks like one of the Kalinowski brothers. Kamarowski, I say Kalinowski. Mark, I wish you were here on the boat, but boy, we got one to set up for this fall. Look at this, Will Nicky, he's in the spray. Oh, they're heading it in. These guys are not playing. Well, Nicky does a spin right in front of Wienit. Wienit's gonna catch him on the outside. I told you these guys are for a fast and furious. There goes Wienit after 874. Critical mistake by Tom Will Nicky. Wienit's gonna slam the door on him right here as he goes into that turn. 874 out in front, disqualified in heat number one. What a break for Mike Wienit. He's got open water inside lane, and he's going to have the afterburner rolling now. He is on the ragged edge. Look at these boats bobble down the front straightaway. He's got to get into it, and in front of that outside boat, 
Watch this, folks. They're two feet apart. Oh! And we and it just makes it through on the inside. My heart's pounding, Jerry. They were close. And it's Mike Wayne it out in front. Now the big move here has to be Will Nicky. Will Nicky's got the pass. 874 of Swenson. Slamming it around door around the first climbing the door. Slamming it around the turn. Coming out. Look at him drift that ball like a hydroplane. Down the front straightaway. Aired out just floating down the straightaway. Gonna open it up and run as hard as he can because right on his tail, flying it really loose, is Tom Wilnicki. Will Nicky's gonna charge the turn. In he goes. Oh, Mike Ween it down in the turn. Well, Nicky gets a break again. Weena got the break when he went in there, but down in the turn, the motor quit running, and everybody zooms on by, opening up for Tom Will Nicky from Glen Ellen, Illinois. He had the break of his life there. He was being trampled by Mike Weena, and Weena went down exiting turn number two. Here he comes, out in front, still flying high, is Tom Wilnicki from Glen Ellen, Illinois. Tom's got a look, he sees the boat across in the course line, goes to the outside. 874 running second, the guy that's gonna pick up second place money here, looks like it's gonna be Jim Konorowski from Oshkosh, and it looks like that Mr. The Brother Kevin Komorowski is going to come home with a decent paycheck today, too. Luck of racing. Lady Luck didn't smile for one driver, two drivers today in this class. Well, out on a cakewalk, still going to run till they finish, is... High fly on Tom Wilnicki. Uh, Stern's Marine boat. You'll see a Stern's boat in SST 120. 874 in the fix right there, running a solid second, but Will Nicky with the afterburner flying. And on chase after him is 488, believe it or not, and he's closing. Boat number 488 is on a walk now, and he's closing on 874. But all by himself, all by himself down the front straightaway. Beginning, going to start, lap number nine. Out in front, Tom Wilnicki just on a cakewalk right now. He smiles each and every time he passes that red number three. That is the standing 1994 national champion in this class. 488 is cl still closing on 874. Komarowski's doing a great job of survival in SST 70. Going to come home with a paycheck. Entering the final lap. White flag poised. One lap to go as he just flies this boat down the front straightaway. This incredible red, white, and blue Johnson powered. Stern's Marine, Arrow Marine, just incredible drive. He don't have to do anything but finish the heat. He can go half throttle and win now, but he's running it as hard as he can. Tom Wilnicki out in front. Everybody now coming up on lap number 10. So let's cast our eyes down to the lakeside and on the east end of the lake. Watch Wilnicki come around the corner. Put the gas down. Watch him fly this boat down in front of you. Here comes your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Wilnicki from Glen Ellen, Illinois. Now, catch how long it takes to catch up with him. Here's your second place boat. 
874, Chris Swenson. 488, I think he's gonna take overall second place. That's John, uh, Jim Komarowski from Oshkosh. The official officials will determine a winner and placement on their laps. They don't. 638, that's Kevin Komarowski. Oh, heartbreak for the Weenit family. That one little break he needed to get down and underneath Komarowski or Wanecki, he made it. The move was fantastic. He came out the next lap around. The motor went south. Terrible feeling when you're running and you're out in front and it quits going what you want it to do. So heartbreak for the Weenit family. But he's a top flight racer and a real gentleman and one of the best engine builders in the country. They'll ex find out what went wrong with the motor. Way to go, Tom! There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of SSC 70, the big money winner today, Tom Welnicki from Glen Ellen, Illinois. Wave to him, he can see you with the cockpit open. We're talking here with Gordy and Fred Miller. Uh, Fred and Gordy, where are you guys from? We're from Chicago, Illinois, actually a suburb about 30 miles northwest of Chicago. Okay, and you're up here running which class? Uh, we're going to be competing in the SST 45 class today. Uh, we're going to run about 70 miles an hour here in Sheboygan. This is a tight course, shorter than we normally would run, and it's only got one buoy turns. Normally we'd run a little over 80, but being the proximity of the seawalls and whatnot, we're going to be propped for a real short course today. Okay. Can you explain a little bit about your boat and your and your motor and uh, the horsepower cubic inch or what we're running here? Well, the motor is a stock Johnson or Evinrude 50 horse fishing powerhead mounted on a racing lower unit. Uh, same motor you buy at any Johnson or Evinrude dealer anywhere in the country. Uh, the tunnel boat is a 13-foot catamaran-style boat. This particular model is built in New York State. They're from all over the country, models competing here from all over the country. And we'll, like I said, run about 70 miles an hour, maybe a little bit over that. But we won't get too fast on this course because it's so tight. Okay. And how long have you been racing now? 17 years. I started when I was 10 years old. And how did you get started in racing? My father has been racing since about 1955, and I kind of grew up with it. Okay. And Fred, you're not in racing anymore? No, I retired last year. 40 okay. years of racing and out. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now you're just helping your son? Yeah. Doing that and uh, doing some promotion work in the uh, marine industry, yeah. Okay. Real good. Okay. Can you explain a little bit about your cockpit and your boat? Sure. About 10 years ago, we had the advent of what we call our safety cells, which is basically a reinforced cockpit. It's got very strong sides. It's made out of Kevlar, carbon fiber, and foam coring. Uh, it's made to resist impacts from other boats and protect the driver in the event of an accident. Inside, we've got a five-point harness, much the same as you'd see in a drag car or a NASCAR, any high-speed race vehicle. Normally, they're three-inch wide belts. Obviously, since you're belted in, you're meant to stay in the boat. Years ago, we thought the best way was to be thrown clear of the accident. We came to realize that that was not the hot setup. A little while after the safety cells came around, we decided we'd put a cockpit canopy over the top of it. This comes down during the race, helps to keep some of the spray out of the driver's face, which obviously makes it a little bit easier to drive the boat. It also provides some impact resistance in, the, in case of an accident or in the case of a barrel roll, it provides some protection for the driver so the water doesn't slam down against his head. We've also got our trim controls in the cockpit. If you look here on the steering wheel, you can see some rocker switches. These allow us to adjust the angle of the motor while we're underway, which really is where the speed of the boat comes from. We've also got a radio system on board so we can talk to our crews. This is how we operate that. The instrumentation in the cockpit is relatively simple. We've got a tachometer that tells us how many RPMs our motor is turning. We've also got a trim indicator that tells us the position of the motor, gives the driver a relatively safe starting point at the start of the race to know where his motor's at. We've also got just a few control switches. We have a ventilator in this boat, a prime switch, and a start switch. 
Other than that, not much to it. Now when you're going down the straightaway at 70, 80 miles an hour, how do you feel the boat? Well, it, how you're riding? Uh, the trim indicator will tell you where your motor's at, which will help you in, uh, you know, interpreting where the boat is riding. Also, it's mostly a seat of the pants type of thing. We don't really run any padding under your seat, so you can feel the boat actually slapping the waves as it goes down the straightaway. When you come into the corner, you want to trim the motor down, which brings the nose of the boat down and allows you to turn very sharp. Well, once you exit the corner and head back down the straightaway, you trim the motor out, which brings the nose of the boat up, and that's where our speed comes from. We literally fly these boats down the straightaways, get them as high as you possibly can out of the water, but you don't want to go too high because then you have what's called a blowover accident, and none of us enjoy those. The cockpit goes off. Let's hear a round of applause. The driver is okay. Man, that's something pounding that head at 85 miles an hour and have the boat come apart on you. Not a real thrill in a race boat. I'm talking to Ralph Barris, driver of a 120 class. Ralph, uh, how long have you been racing? Well, it's my 11th year of racing. Uh, all told, I originally started out in hydro classes, which is a smaller class, and I moved my way up into tunnel boat classes into 70 class, and then I, from there I moved into 120. Okay, uh, the 120 class, now what are we talking, 120 cubic inch on what type of uh, hull? Uh, this is a 120 cubic inch motor. Uh, we run it on basically a 16 foot boat. We have to have a weight requirement of 1,075 pounds, and it's a full V6 engine, 120 cubic inch, right around 200 horse foot out. Okay. Uh, you raced here last year. Uh, you well, had a little problem? Yeah, last year we were out here and did some hot lapping and that, and the weather didn't cooperate too much. It was pretty rough, and I had lost my tail color on the boat. And we had wrecked a rollover switch in the boat because of rough water conditions, and we decided to scratch on it. Okay. And this year we're going to get them. Going to go get them this year. Okay. What? Uh, how do you feel about today's race? Uh, well, I think course it's be a good race. We're going to have to watch the wind gusts coming down the front straight, but other than that, I think the driver should have no problem. Well, here's your lineup in boat number three from Cascade, Wisconsin, Ralph Barris. Ralph's got a pretty neat bunch of people helping him. He's doing relatively well this year. He's winning races. Got a second the last time he went out. In boat 28, Craig Kelly. Greg Kelly from Aurora, Illinois, I told you a little about him. And from Hartford, Wisconsin, in boat 20, Stan Armstrong. Stan, a past national champion in another division of stock outboard. He run, ran D Stock Hydro and some modifieds back then. One of the premier racers in the country from Heartland, Wisconsin, Stan Armstrong. From North Aurora, Illinois, I just told you a little bit about him. That's 662, Chris Fairchild. And 410, last year's reigning champion from Racine, Wisconsin, Jim Meyer. In 135, that's Larry Hogan from Salem, Wisconsin. That's your lineup. So it's all for the big buck right now and that beautiful trophy that's sitting back here with Crystal and Oak. And they really want that and the big paycheck from the Wisconsin Grand Prix for this championship race for a title for the Grand Prix Series and the Wisconsin Championships. The flag goes up. Any time now, he'll drop that flag and watch these boats come out. If you're down there looking at the back of the boats, watch the hole in the water they create. It's incredible. Starter standing. There goes the flag and off the dock they come. Look at them jump out of that hole. Did you see that little hole of water? It is Stearns Marine. Lequamale in second in 683 or 662 Fairchild, all battling up front. Coming around, so they come and start picking up this, the lap clock, it's on it. Look at Stearns turn that boat down there. What a move. And Barris just swings it around the corner, is an up flying, but look how beautiful this boat is with Greg Kelly, a battle for second with three boats. On the hip is Fairchild. 
Alley, four G's right there. Bear springs her in, slams her around the corner. A big move went in a little heavy, and that left it open for 410, Jim Meyer. But this is gonna be the race for second place right now, because these two inside boats are gonna bury. Oh, watch them go in. Meyer comes out in second. Oh, Kelly's up on his side and brings it back down. What a ride. Barris on the outside. Look at that. Stern's bow going to turn number one and fly right around the corner. Meyer in second place. Barris in third, being challenged by Mr. Chris Fairchild. But Barris is on a roll. And the two boats that got washed out are Larry Hogan, 135, and Stan Armstrong. So they're going to go at it just as hard as the others because the money pays all the way down. The battle is for second place, but look at this. Stern's boat just leave everybody in the dust. That's five Gs going around. 100 mile an hour in and 90 coming out. Watch the move on the inside. Look at him hooking underneath Barris. 662, I thought it was gonna barrel roll, but he's right under Barris. Barris is gonna stay out. He knows he's there, there are mirrors on, and he's popping and a bopping. And look at the race for the final position with Larry Hogan backing up on Armstrong. Fast, fast ain't the word. He's gonna lap these guys. Watch him buzz on by Armstrong in the trailing position. Second place is set, but that third place race is still contended by Fairchild and Barris. Ah, Barris said, I'm taking the inside lane. Fairchild's got to run over that dirt water. There's your lap boat out in front, just singing down there, almost stood it on its side, is front runner. <laughs> My mouth stopped working. Stern's Marine Boat with Greg Kelly just hauling away. Larry Hogan is in one of the trailing boats. But look at this. These guys are running so fast that Meyer just swung it right around there and lapped the boat. Barris is coming around to lap the boat. These guys are flying these boats through these corners. 115 mile an hour down the straightaway. Still flying down in front, but that battle is still going on for third. And traffic's going to play a part in that north turn. How he can keep his head inside the boat, I don't know, because I've had it slam me all the way to the right side of the cockpit. On the inside is second place right here. Whoa. Barris got a little loose up there. Settled it down now. Watch him slam this boat through the turn. Right on around. Fairchild's gonna play hard times to pick him up. But Barris is rocketing down that straightaway. Got a little bobble in position, but look at this boat come down here now. Stern's Marine. You notice too that when he got halfway around that corner, you just started seeing the water come down. But he is on a cakewalk in heat number one. Second place boat, the open, open cover, doesn't have a cover on, that's up in the rules too, is Meyer from Racine, Wisconsin. Barris doing a great job of driving. I mean, it's thrilling to see him run that boat around there. But that Stern's Marine boat, the Mariner, kicking Mercury and kicking OMC. Mariner takes flight, here comes Dan Armstrong, new to the uh, 120 class and rocketing down that back straightaway. Meyer, your second place boat, almost a straightaway behind the leader and Barris just rocketing it in. Sets it down, going a little deeper and a little harder. Practicing, so to speak, but he's out and gone. Here comes Stern Marine, around and under Hogan. That is called speed, ladies and gentlemen. 
He is actually unleashed. Turned on the afterburner now. Armstrong entering the turn. Here comes your second place boat. Of Jim Meyer, third right now entering the turn. And they've got a battle between Fairchild and Barris for third. And look what's happening, folks. Last lap, if they had two more laps to go, he would be trailing and almost lap the entire field. Well, let's watch him as he goes down the back straightaway. He's going to be entering as they exit. Here they come, one lap to go for Meyer. One lap to go for these guys here. Fairchild with traffic. What's he gonna do? He's gotta take the inside. Checkered flag right now for Craig Kelly from Aurora, Illinois. Flag is up. Tell him he can't talk. He's All right, as soon as the flag goes down, these guys will charge out of the hole. Five seconds to 100 miles an hour. And the flag goes down, and here they turn it on. Oh, Meyer comes out real strong. Meyer and Fairchild and Stearns right up front, and here it comes. Barris on the outside, but these guys are three boats that are not playing. Meyer's got the inside. Callie in the middle. Callie sweeps. Meyer stays in under him. Callie, all the, oh man, kicks that turn, that kick, kick out, and up he goes and away. Meyer, Callie, Fairchild. It's Callie and Meyer out in the front, dueling with each other. Fairchild in second, or third. Watch these guys around this turn. Look at the acceleration from, oh, these guys are at it. Fairchild's up in there mixing it up. Ralph Barris has to close up some distance to take home that paycheck. And the battle in the back. Whoa, look at him roll that boat out. Aired out, coming out of the turn, pretty much went over to the Coast Guard station and parked it on one of their ships. But the fight, look at this battle, ladies and gentlemen. Look at Meyer on the inside, hawking it around. And Fairchild's right up in there. Barris driving very well, but these guys got that clean, fresh water, and they are all duking it out for the first place position in this heat. Watch them swing out. Watch this boat on the outside pick up the air faster, but it's Meyer with the inside line. Fairchild coming on now himself. This is a battle. Meyer and Kelly side by side, a foot apart through turn number two. Wow, what a move. And it's, here comes Meyer back at Kelly. Kelly the outside. Meyer drives it in so hard. Whoa. Kelly floats it out. Meyer takes the acceleration in the inline. They're still deck and deck, but sneaking up in the middle of both of these guys is Fairchild. Oh, now that's going, but the water's still rough. Oh, a big bobble by Meyer. At least Fairchild an opportunity to close in on Meyer now. Well, what a strategic move made by Craig Kelly in that last turn. He went in wide and cut a almost like a, an X pattern in there. Well, you can't cut an X, but like a square box. And when these guys hit it, the trailing boats, that was it. They were up and out of the water and no control. You got to get off the power. So on the run, right now, out in front the Stearns Marine boat. I told you Fairchild was sneaking up. There he is. 662 just almost took a dump. 
He got himself watered down. Callie drifts it out of that turn and he gets that nose real high. It's windier than the Dickens down there. The battle is for second place right now between Fairchild. Whoa, Kelly almost loses it. Brings it back down easy. Swings it around the turn number two. Look at this battle with Fairchild. Coming in with Hogan. Second is Meyer in that blue and white 410. And starting to close up is Ralph Barris on the leaders. Here comes Callie smoking that straightaway. Right down in front of you now, going around turn number two. Four G's, folks, right there, because he decelerated a little bit. Meyer sets the boat early, slams it around the corner. Fairchild's gonna go out and get some clean water on that outside. Here comes Barris after Hogan around the corner. Hogan holds it in tight. Barris on the charge. Look at Kelly right about midline in the course. That boat picks up off the water and dances on the propeller. Unbelievable racing. Right here. Oh, 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 oh. What my heart just did was start fluttering for Jim Meyer, who almost went that extra inch and over backwards right in front of us. Got it down, and he's off sailing again. Barris beautifully trimmed out, ramming it into the turn, coming around full bore. Comes out of the turn, kicks her out, and down the back straight away he goes. Here's your lead boat coming down the straightaway now from Aurora, Illinois, the Stearns Marine boat piloted by Craig, Greg Kelly. Myers makes an inside move on Armstrong and blows by on the back straightaway. Fairchild still trying to catch Meyer. Down the straightaway they come. The race is going on. It's Craig Kelly throwing the distance between those boats. White flag, last lap for Craig Kelly. Down the back straightaway he goes. In the meantime, you got Fairchild trying to hang on to catch, hoping the Gremlins will buy Jim Meyer in 410. Down inside Meyer he goes, picks up five boat lengths. Swings to the outside. He's going to make a rapid move on the outside to try and catch and pass Jim Meyer in this final turn. Here comes Callie down the front straightaway. Aired out beautifully, 115 plus miles an hour, folks. The checkered flag is waving, and he beats Hogan to the line. Second place and third place battle right now. Meyer crossing and Fairchild right on his tail. Got a battle coming down here now. Meyer's trying to swing on around. And Myers gets him at the end, beats out the 20 boat at the end of the heat. Well, the black flag is up. That means these drivers are finished with their racing heats. The scorers are tallying positions. And I can basically tell you who the winner is right now without a show.
time now it can come down and these guys will rip out of the start chute not as fast as the big guys but they'll run 85 miles an hour they're extremely light and there they go they're extremely light when they get down into the wind to turn number one watch how they come off the water flying not a real good start for Jeff Brezak or Rodney Shue, but they are fast boats and watch them start picking up. These fellas are all locked up in a bundle up there going in at two feet apart into turn number one. Water flies out in front is the yeller boat. Yeah, we got one buoy moving over touching the other. Looking for phone numbers probably, but right out in front it's the Mesa, Arizona boat chasing Garrett Armstrong. Second place is Jason Campbell. Herb Julian has third place, 55, is fourth right now. Rodney Shue and Jeff Brezak is trying to squeeze in there. They got five lap or 10 lap race here. But out in front, Garrett Armstrong. Did well in qualifying, being chased by the Mesa Arizona boat. You see the move that Garrett made? He came out of the turn tight and drifted it wide, forcing. Now the move is made, forcing boat number five to go inside. But out in front, Garrett Armstrong, a world champion in this class two years ago. Rodney Shue in 55. Look at this battle for fourth. Inside, Jeff Brezak takes off and walks on the inside and got under the a veteran driver of 45 years, Herb Julian. Now he's set his sights for number 55, Rodney Shue from Kankakee. Did you see how that, that neat patented move that uh, Garrett Armstrong made? That comes from years of racing when he was a youngster in the kneel down hydroplanes and runabouts. The Mesa, Arizona driver, Campbell, has to run in his weight. So that means that Armstrong, with each and every time he goes around the course, keeping him in there, will keep Mr. Campbell back behind him because he's running the aerated water. Smurbach doing a great job of driving, newly introduced to the tunnel boat division, a consummate world cha or national champion in Neil Down Hydro, stepping up to the big guys now will come out in front and watch this young guy run. Whoa, there was a big bobble there by the second place driver. But Garrett Armstrong swinging it on around. Doing a great job. Jeffrey Brezak is closing on boat number 55 of Rodney Shue. When you get in the back of the pack, that rough water hits you and you can't get too much more speed. So we're gonna see some, whoa, oh, a spin on the inside by boat 55, giving the third place boat an opportunity. Look at the move back out into the lane to block the water. <laughs> 55 closing up on number five. Jeff Brezak down to the inside of that unchallenged water and still closing on boat number 55. 149 driving remarkably well. Trying to close on boat number 55 of Rodney Shue from Kankakee. Comes your lead boat, the Firehouse Soft Wash of Garrett Armstrong, the Mesa, Arizona boat number five, out in second place, Rodney Shue in third, Jeffrey Brezak in fourth. Here comes Irv Julian, a 45-year veteran, in boat number 69. Out of turn two, walking out toward the shoreline a little bit to get some clear water from this uh, back of the pack boat is Garrett Armstrong winging it around, flying now down the front straightaway. 
Shu running in his wake. He's not he's got a chance to catch him. So he's gonna try it on heat number two. Shu's gonna settle for second place. Pretty much stretched out right now. They're gonna all finish the way they are. Armstrong winging out of the turn. They're gonna try it when they reverse positions. If Armstrong could get out in front off the start like he just did, they're not going to catch him a second time. But this Mesa, Arizona driver is really driving that Miller Genuine Draft race boat. They're all very equitably, uh, speed-wise, they're very equitable, only a half a mile an hour separating first from last. Out of the turn, running down the inside, passing the uh, trailing boat is Stan, or am I, I said Stan, is Garrett Armstrong, son of Stan Armstrong, who just finished in the 120 class. <clears throat> Watch Garrett tighten it up, go on the buoy right around the corner. And passes on the inside the boat of Mark Spurbach. Coming up right now when they wing around, turn number one down by the open area of the lake will be Garrett Armstrong. To enter his final lap of competition for heat number one. High flying down the front straightaway is Garrett Armstrong having control problems in second place. Yeah, well, one more lap to go for these drivers out in front. Shoe is closing on number five. Winging around for his final lap now is Jeffrey the Breeze Breezak out of Countryside, Illinois. Entering his last lap here now is the 45 year veteran of racing driving the Julian Shade Shop special. Herb Julian, checkered flag is up for the winner of heat number one. There he is, Garrett Armstrong, number 22. Second place will be Jason Campbell from Mesa, Arizona. In boat number 55 crossing now, Rodney Shue in third. Here's the battle coming down for the final. There you go, and it goes to Jeff Rizak. And the Mark Schmerbach from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Here comes Herb Julian right now for the checkered flag. Now they'll go take their positions on the dock in the reverse order in which they finished. And let's see what happens next. White flag is up. 10 more laps of racing to go. The starter's holding it up. Anytime now that flag can drop and they're gonna switch them engines on and roar off that start. And there it goes. Here they come off the start. Jeff Brezak got a delay on it. Julian and Brezak out in back, but the big guy out in front. It's a reverse order, number five. Jason Campbell out in front. Armstrong on his heel on the inside. Really wild on the turn, but Armstrong gets a big move on the inside because that, look how close they're running. They're touching boats. Down the straightaway, Armstrong on the inside. Campbell on the outside. Here they come, smoking down the straightaway on the beginning lap. Let's see what happens because Campbell's gonna close the door on Armstrong. Shoe gets up to Armstrong. Oh, and a big wet down there on Jeff Brezak who sneaks right in the fray. When he went around the corner the first time, let's keep our eye on the end down at the straightaway and see what happens. He's going to bring it around a little bit easier. 
Razak pulls it tight to the inside. Trying to catch boat 55. Armstrong running close to the shore, keeping that clear water. Out in front, got to open up that distance. It's on lap time also. The battle is going. Number five, Jason Campbell from Mason, Arizona is out in front. Being chased by Garrett Armstrong from Heartland, Wisconsin in boat 22. Third place is Randy Shue, Rodney Shue, Kankakee, Illinois in boat number 55, followed by Jeffrey Brezak. Oh, look at him bobble coming out of the corner and Armstrong gets a good shot. But all of a sudden the afterburner goes on and here he comes down the front straightaway, zigzagging somewhat down the straightaway is number five, Jason Campbell. Really dancing and loose on that water. Keep your eye on the third place boat because every time he comes around, he is closing the distance on Garrett Armstrong in boat 22. He could be the spoiler for Garrett to win. Rounding the corner, taking it tight, aiming it out a little bit. Now watch him zigzag the course to create some flawed water for the second place driver. Now he'll start coming down the middle of the straightaway and carry it toward the current. Armstrong running the outside, but look at this boat. It's all based on time. Armstrong has to run tighter and closer because the winner's gonna be determined on overall time between their two heats of racing. Running light, boat number five of Jason Campbell from Mesa, Arizona. But he's out in front and stretching his lead. Armstrong has to stay on the power to keep that distance as short as possible. Because when he was running in front of Mr. Cam uh, Campbell, that's that interlude between one and two that's going to determine who wins. That's the distance of each heat. Armstrong bobbling in a corner, giving up another boat length, but out he comes and Rodney Shue is on his chase after him. Brezak taking in line. This is gonna be a close race. Look, I told you, watch boat 55. He could be the spoiler for Armstrong. He's closing inch by inch, and so is Brezak on boat number 55. That's a hard drive that he made. How did he win? Just at the end of the heat. The last lap I told you, watch boat 55. That boat passed Garrett Armstrong at the finish line. It put Garrett back. So there he is, your winner from all the way from Arizona, Jason Campbell.